If you're a C-sharp developer, then this is the video for you. In this episode, I'm going to cover 21 tools that will help any .NET dev to write and maintain code faster and with less headaches. Now, as we've got 21 tools to cover in this video, I'm going to keep the intro short. However, one thing I'm pretty sure of is that you won't want me to consider you a massive tool. And to avoid that, if you haven't already, you want to smash on the subscribe button now. Now, if this is the first time you've come across my channel, then my name is John and I do a video every single Sunday that's aimed at making you a better web developer and an all round coding legend. So assuming that you've hit subscribe, let's look at our first tool, which is called Dev Toys. Now, the reason why I recommend you should install Dev Toys is because it's the Swiss army knife of development. So it basically comes with 27 different tools that can aid you when you're writing code. Now, the good news is it's free of charge. And as you can see on the screen right now, we've got a bunch of useful tools. So we've got things like a color picker. We've got things like a text converter, JSON formatter, JSON to YAML. We've got things like a markdown preview, lorm ipsum generator. We've got a GUID generator. We've even got things like a text compiler. So if you just want one of those useful all round dev tools, give this a try. Now, if you're thinking that dev toys looks pretty sweet, but you don't know where to download it from, do not worry. Now, I've created a related tutorial which basically contains all the tools you're about to see and their download locations, and it's linked to from the related tutorial below. Now, one essential tool for all developers is decompiler. And a great decompiler that I recommend is called DNSpy. Now, one thing to point out is that DNSpy has actually been archived, and the one I'm recommending is this forked version, which is from DNSpy X, and it's called DNSpy. Now, the main reason why I recommend you check out DNSpy as a decompiler is not just because you can browse any code that you want to and decompile it. The reason why I reckon you should check it out is because of this nifty little feature here. Yep, DNSpy is not just a decompiler, it's also a mini debugger as well. And I find this really handy if I want to write some code in Visual Studio while debug in a different program. Because if I do it entirely in Visual Studio, my code will be locked and I can be limited in the changes I make sometimes. Now, a few viewers out there might be rightfully concerned about installing an unknown executable from a random GitHub. And there's good cause for that thinking because, you know, as we can see in January 2022, DNA Spy actually got hacked with some Trojan horse stuff in it. So if you're in that camp and you just want to install software from a known supplier, then my second alternative is .peak. I used this for many years. It's a great decompiler. The only thing that this is missing is that debugging aspect. The next tool we're going to look at is a Visual Studio extension. And in fact, it's the most downloaded free Visual Studio extension in the marketplace today. And it's called CodeMade. In essence, CodeMade is a refactoring tool that means that when you're in Visual Studio, you can start to refactor your code much quicker automatically. Now, after installing CodeMade from Marketplace, in extensions, you can see that we have a number of options. And it's going to help you perform tasks like code cleaning, code digging, code reorganizing, code formatting, joining and sorting that much easier. Now, because CodeMade is absolutely free, there's no harm in trying it out. And trust me, it will help you write code quicker. Now, keeping on the theme of refactoring, if you have a bigger budget, then you should install ReSharper, no questions asked. ReSharper is the most popular paid for extension in Visual Studio history. It's been around for many years. Now, the only issue, as I said, with ReSharper is that it's going to cost you something like 200 300 pounds or 350 pounds for an ultimate license now obviously this cost is probably quite steep for any hobby developers or anyone just looking to learn .NET. however if you're working for an organization and you can get them to pay for this or expense it then get this because it's going to make your life much easier now the next tool is an online tool and it's really useful for you to just try out some c-sharp compile things whenever you need to and it's called .NET fiddle now, there are a number of these online compilers available. However, the reason why I like .NET Fiddle is because we can go from C Sharp, VB, F Sharp. We can also go from a console to MVC, and we can also go from .NET 4.2 to 8.3 Preview, which is really nice. 
Now, as you can see, when we've got some code, we can have our controller view. We can then update some stuff. So let's say that we're going to update this. Now, if we just run our fiddle, you can see that we can test and compile our code without having to fire up Visual Studio, which is really handy, especially if you're copying stuff from Stack Overflow and you just want to try it out. The next tool is a Git based tool. Now, if I'm honest, 98% of the time, I'll just use Git with the command line. However, sometimes if I'm in a Git flow and I need to compare different branches, having a visual tool to help me see where the different changes are in the commit history is way more useful than trying to do it through a terminal. Now, just looking at the program in its entirety, I'm hoping we can all agree that this UI is pretty sweet. And in my opinion, Git Kraken is the best looking Git client on Windows. Now, as I mentioned, when I'm working with Git flow in a large team, this graph history here could be really useful to try and track down or figure out when code got introduced. Now, for each Git commit, you can see that we can see all the files related to it. Clicking on it, we're going to see a preview of those files. Now, on the left hand side here, we've got some controls. So you can see that we've got access to our local repos, our remote origins. We've got all of our pull requests. We can see team members, tags. We can access sub modules if we've got those types of projects. So if you're looking for a solid Git client, then Git Kraken hands down gets my vote. This command prompt sucks. And if you're a Windows developer, you shouldn't be using it. Instead, if you're a proper developer, I recommend you install Windows Terminal. Now, the reason for this is yes, as you can see, we can customize it. Now, in my opinion, the coolest thing about Windows Terminal is that it allows you to work with different shells. So on my PC, you can see that we've got PowerShell, we've got Windows Command Prompt, and I've even got Bash, which has got Zhush installed. So the really cool thing is that, as you'll see, once I've opened up my new profile, it can have different background pictures, different styles, different fonts. Now, if you are interested in learning how to configure your PC so it looks like mine, or you simply just want to install Bash or Zhush, and you want a step-by-step -step guide, then I've created a video that walks you through the process, which again is linked to below. My final terminal tip within this video is that if for whatever crazy reason you didn't get along with Windows Terminal, you consider using Tabby instead because it's way much better than classic Windows command prompt. So available from tabby.sh, Tabby is a alternative terminal. Now scrolling down to the features, noteworthy things about Tabby is that it comes with an SSH client. It's skinnable, so you can create your own themes and color schemes. It comes with FTP support. It comes with the ability to do PowerShell, PS Core, WSL, Git Bash, Sigwin, and a number of others. And it also has a plugin extension library. So in my opinion, Windows Terminal is the number one terminal you should be using for Windows. Otherwise, look at Tabby. The next tool will allow you to do a very common development task, and that is file and folder comparisons. And in my opinion, the best diff tool for Windows is called Beyond Compare. Now we'll look at the features of Beyond Compare in a minute. However, it's worth pointing out that this is not a free tool. However, it's not gonna break the bank because at a minimum, all you need to do is pay 35 bucks. Beyond Compare will allow you to easily compare files and folders using its intuitive UI. Now, if you're doing the same types of comparisons a lot, you can make use of the session feature to have a quick handy shortcut. Now, when it comes to files, it's very easy to compare the differences between two different files. And finally, you can synchronize your local changes to FTP sites or cloud storage really, really easily as well. Now, if you're just tight or you don't have 35 bucks to spend on a tool, the second best diff tool on Windows is luckily free. And this tool is called WinMerge. Now, WinMerge is open source. It's not as feature rich as Beyond Compare and the UI is as nice. However, if you want basic diff tooling, this is a great alternative. The next tool we're going to cover is called Express Profiler. And this tool is really handy when you need to debug data coming in or out of SQL. Now, you can get an Express Profiler with paid for SQL. However, that costs a fortune. And the best thing about Express Profiler is it's free. Now, as you'll hopefully see on the screen right here, Express Profiler is running on my local database. And if I start loading up different pages, 
what we should find is that we'll start getting all the data getting passed to and returned from my SQL server getting displayed in this profile. So you can see that we've done a select here. We've got some from the Umbraco cache. We've got here where we're doing a store procedure lookup. And when I'm debugging, I find this ability to see the statements being sent to SQL and the data being returned really useful to help me troubleshoot where issues in my code might lie. Now, let's say, for example, we have a page and it's displaying funky data. By being able to see what's being sent to SQL and returned, we can rule out if it's a database issue, a store procedure issue, or a code issue. And that can be a really handy first step into actually identifying where problems can be within your application. The next tool is another handy web development tool, and it's called Zenu Link Sleuth. Now, Zenu Link Sleuth will basically index your site and create a report if you have broken links or not. So all we need to do is add in our URL, click go, and off you can see we can generate a report. Now this is really gonna index every single page and every single link. So I find that this tool is really useful to run when you're just about to launch a new website and you wanna make sure that all your links are working. Additionally, you'll also probably wanna run this tool several times a year just to make sure that your SEO is on point because you'll actually get downgraded if you have loads of broken links on your website and as we know, links over time will break. So running Zenu can make sure that your website is working like a dream. If you're still working in a company that works with traditional servers and you're remote desktoping into all those servers all the time, then one thing which will level up your productivity is switching from the janky Windows desktop client to mRemote. Now mRemote is a free tool and it's great for several reasons. First, we can have different tabs. This means we can tab between different servers really easily. Second, you can store connections. This means you don't need to remember the IP address, the username details, the logins to be able to get into all the different servers. Instead, you can create your connections in M remote. Next time you open it, you can log into that server really quickly. Finally, another great thing is you can import and export your settings. So if you need to move between different computers, you can export your settings, import them easily, jobs are good and no more manual setup anymore. I can't recommend this tool enough. The next tool that we're covering is called Power Toys by Microsoft. And it's a tool that I use every single day and it's one that I can't live without. Now, just like DevToys, PowerToys is a combination of different utilities packaged into a single thing. And for reference, some of the tools you'll get with PowerToys include things like Always on Top, Awake, File Explorer add-ons, a host file editor, image resizing, bulk renaming, paste as plain text, quick accents, registry previews, screen rulers, and much more. Now, out of these tools, the ones that I use on a daily basis are Fancy Zones. Now, as you can see, Fancy Zones allows you to map specific areas on your page so you can easily snap windows. And this is epic when you're doing development and you need a terminal open and you need your ID open and you need that same windows position over and over again. Instead of trying to manually get everything right, being able to snap things in position is going to save you loads of time. Now, the next thing that I use all the time is the color picker. For my day to day, I'm always setting up demos for different companies and I always need to use and pick their color brand. So by using the color picker, by doing a control shift C, and as you can see, I can get the hex color and the RGB color and I can copy it to clipboard really simple so I can use it again. And the final tool that I use every single day is the file locking tool. So let's say that we're doing some debugging. We try and delete our files. Oh no, we've got an error. We can't complete this. So all we need to do is right click on our folder. Then we just need to click on what's using this file. From here, we'll get a little pop up. And from this pop up, we should see which process is locking our file. And then we can end it very simply. And for .NET development, being able to delete and unlock files is an essential tool that's going to save you loads of time. Now, we all know that the default Windows search completely sucks. On the screen right now, you can see a speeded up video of a search I did on my machine for the term index. And this search took over one minute and 50 seconds to return any sort of results and finish. And this, quite frankly, is unacceptable. And because the search sucks so badly, this is the reason why you want to install an alternative search. And the one that I recommend is called Everything. 
Now, the great thing about everything, again, it's free. And what it will do is sit in your system tray and it'll automatically index files when you create them. Now, let's do the same search that we did in Windows. Now, as you can see, it took, what, a microsecond. We've got all my index. I can filter it to my index HTML if I want to. And it updates literally in seconds. So instead of waiting two minutes for Windows to do something, just install everything and you're gonna have at your fingertips a search which is gonna save you a bunch of time. Now we're reaching the end of the list. However, there's a few essential tools that I need to mention. And one of those is Ditto. So Ditto will live in your taskbar as you can see here, and it's called Ditto the Clipboard Manager. Now, as the name says, what this is going to do is store everything you had into your clipboard and add it into a history. You are then free to search your history. Now, obviously, for developers, we copy code to our clipboard all the time. However, sometimes we lose that code. Now, let's say that we're doing something like a Git merge and we accidentally lose some code. Being able to search your Ditto clipboard history for that code means that you can get out of that bother without having to omit anything to any of your colleagues that you've done something dumb. And I've done this plenty of times. I managed to avert all the code by simply looking in my Ditto clipboard. And for me, this is an essential tool. Now, I might not use this day to day. However, when I make a mistake, this is the thing which will save you. Now, I'm pretty confident most developers will know about this next tool, so I'm going to cover it in too much detail. It's Postman. So Postman is an API staple. In essence, if you need to build an API or test an external third party API, you want to use this tool. What it will allow you to do is send network requests to an API and then inspect the response. Now, in my opinion, one of the things which make Postman so essential is its API repository capability. So in here, you can basically create collections and you can add in all your different endpoints. Now, the great thing about this is that your repository will be stored against your account. So you can log into different versions of Postman and get it automatically. You can also share these repository with your team members. So this means that when you're working in a company, in your team, it's very easy for you to work on a shared repository of API endpoints just using Postman alone. And for this reason, it's an essential tool in my opinion. Now, next up, we have a tool that I've mentioned a few times on this channel, and it's FLUX. And what FLUX Flux does is that over time, when it goes from light to dark, it will start removing the blue from your screen and putting in a yellowish tint. And it's this gentle reduction of white light on your screen that will help prevent your brain being so discrambled, which will hopefully get you better sleep and make you more productive. The final tool that I want to cover in this video is Light Cap. Now, have you ever had this? You've got a bug locally and you want to tell someone like QA how to reproduce the bug. However, you can't be bothered to write loads of stuff into Slack or write it over email. Now, this is where recording your screen will save you time. So what Lyscap does, as you can see, it'll give you a window over your monitor. You can decide where you want to create your file and then you can record things. So in here, you can see that I can do a bunch of stuff. Then I can stop recording. Now, what will happen is I've got a file. This is then going to be a low quality, low size GIF, which is going to recreate that screenshot. I can now add this in an email over Slack, over Messenger whatsoever, and then anyone else can see exactly what I'm doing. And this saves me so much time instead of having to recreate the wheel each time and explain myself, just record a simple screenshot and it's going to make your life much easier and quicker for both parties. So that concludes my 2023 list of tools that I'm currently using. Now, what do you think about my list? Now, I am a bit of a productivity computer tool geek. So if there are some tools that I haven't covered that you think I should be checking out, let me know in the comments below because I will review them. Now, if you haven't already, then it would mean the world to me for you to like the button. If you found value from this video, I'm trying to grow this channel and that definitely helps me also smash on the subscribe button. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Windows development, then I've created a cool video, which is called the best NuGet packages that you must know about. And the link to that video is on screen now. So check that out if you want to learn more about development in .NET. Otherwise, hope you're having an epic time wherever you are in this beautiful world. And until next Sunday, happy coding.